Good evening. Welcome to Wednesday night, The Fox's Tale. The first one of many to come from myself, The Bar Shed. You know, very proud to be doing this on a Wednesday night and for Phil. And I say we're going to go forward, we'll do this every Wednesday night. We'll have a player from the past at the football club to come on and chat to you. Got to thank Jamie from the Fox's Arm for all his hard work over the last few months getting all these players on. But as now, it's Wednesday night, and it's time for The Fox's Tale. I say we'll bring on the co-host the blo- who makes this all happen, Jamie from the Fox's Arms. All right, Tom, how the devil are you? Good, thanks, how's mate. How's it going? Good. In the you good good? Are you looking forward to this? Back. Oh, mate, I'm looking for this. Are you I'm looking good for tough. this? I'm buzzing for this one, mate. We've got an absolute good. great the football club on tonight because of you. Uh, I'm right. Go you on. Do the introducing, mate. You do the introducing bit. Right, I certainly will. Right, we've got none other than old. Twinkle Toes himself, Mr. Winger, Steve Linex. He joined us from Birmingham in uh, February of 81 for 60,000. I thought it was more than 60,000, actually. I think he's worth a lot more than that. Uh, Jock Wallace signed him. Um, he played 240 games, scored 60 goals, 23 of them penalties. So I'm not quite sure where that's in the penalty list at Leicester, but I think it's quite high up. And that's the 19th highest goal scorer he was for Leicester. Uh, and he had a great link up with Smith and Lineker. And in, in three his three main seasons, Alan Smith was here. They scored 161 goals in three seasons between them. So I think we better get him on and start asking him a few questions about his Leicester career. Don't you, Tom? Totally agree with you. Yeah, let's bring him on now. Good evening, Steve. Welcome, gents. How are you, Steve? How are you? Are you good? I'm fine, thank you. Are you glad football's back? Well, just from watching this game, it's a bit... You know, I don't know how to take it at the moment. <laughs> What's the score at the minute? Because I've not got TV in front of me at the minute. No goals. Oh, it's nil-nil. Yeah, oh, Sheffield, that's uh, that's... Sheffield scored, but the goalkeeper carries over the line, but VAR didn't see it and the referee's technology didn't go off. Oh. So Let's not go about VAR just yet. Let's not ruin the night straight away. Right, shall I get us going with the first proper question, shall I then, Tom? Yeah, as you always do, Jamie. You to, uh, good, good. Right, question. how did how did Big Jock Wallace get you to leave Birmingham? What did he say to you to come over to the East Midlands instead of the West Midlands? Uh, to be fair, it came out of the blue. Um, I just got into the Birmingham side and uh, I was doing quite well. And then all of a sudden uh, I got called in by Jimmy Smith who said uh, there's a big interest from Leicester City. So... Um, the next day, I travelled out to see Big Jock, and he just sold me the club straight away. Because that was in the old, that was in the old first division, wasn't it? Uh, like I say, in '81, was that? Yeah, that was the year we were we struggled, weren't we? Because Big Jock said that, oh yeah, we're going to win the league if we got promoted. And Big Jock at the start of the season, yeah, we're going to win the league this year. I'm thinking, hold on, Jock, that's a bit too much. That is. <laughs> <laughs> what was Jock Wallace like in training then, Steve? How did he take it? Was he like hands on? I could presume he was very hands on, knowing Jock. Oh, he was very, very hands on because, like, um, I played for. Uh, I went over when I left West Brom. Went over to uh, Shamrock Rovers in Ireland, and they played in uh, green and white hoops. So I made the mistake of one day when in training just to wind him up, and um, <laughs> I got beat up in the gym by all the Scots lads. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good start. <laughs> Yeah, didn't wear again. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you didn't. I bet you didn't. No. Uh, also, as well, th- we're going to go straight into it. A lot of people were asking before because we put like you coming on and that. A lot of people were asking about the Shrewsbury game in the cup oh. when you when you went in goal. That game I mean, was that your choice. Was that your choice? You went in goal, or was it like Jock said? Oh, you better go in. Well, to be fair, we used to mess about in training. Uh, everybody like had a little stint in goal and I'd done a bit before, just never played a league game or anything. And um, when Al got injured, nobody else seemed wanted to go in. So I just said, yeah, I'll go in, I'll do it. And uh, But they were a bit dubious of my size at first. <laughs> and uh, they said, no, 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 go on, go in. And that was it. But you kept a clean sheet though, didn't you? You and Youngie kept clean sheets. I'll tell you what, I tipped one over the bar and I told all my mates, 
that it was a great save to watch it on match of the day and they cut it, didn't show it. I was gutted. <laughs> Your star in moments and they missed you out. But then you, you it, came yeah. back on fit. You came back on field, though. Didn't you set up the next two goals, or did you already set up two goals? I can't quite remember. As soon as I came out, when Bayer took up my position on the right, um, we broke away, passed it to me, beat the defender, crossed the ball in, and Jimmy Melrose chested it down and put it away. Jimmy Melrose, I forgot about him. He was a good player, wasn't he? Never really got the chance with us, did he? Sort of faded towards the end of his Leicester career a bit. Yeah, when I first went there, to be honest, that, that's what sold me the club because had, there was quite a few Scottish lads there and uh, the bond was, you know, it, it was first class. You could see that what Jock wanted to do and, and the kind of players that he he wanted, which were all fighters and things like that. And the nice thing about it was that they'd sort, of, sort everything out for you on the park. There was no problems. And all, so I've just read it. Can you see that comment on there about uh, what Stuart Hall's just put, Tom? Yeah, I'll put it on. There we go. Ask him if he's still eating but butties at the cafe. <laughs> uh, Do you... No, I've moved, I've moved jobs now, so uh, I'm I'm not. <laughs> oh, you've stopped eating baking butties now, have you? <laughs> That's it, yeah. Trying to lose a bit of weight. Uh, all right, we're all on this lockdown. Blimey. My spare tyre's got an extra spare tyre. <laughs> um, what about the um, the semi final, the next game along? Uh, Garth, I know Garth Cook scored for Spurs, and then Ian Wilson scored an own goal. But before that own goal, did you actually think you had a chance of getting to the final when it was like one nil? To be fair, um, we got. I think thinking back now, we got to half time and it was no goals, and we, right, we yeah. thought we, did, we thought we got a great chance, you know, because. Um, one of our fortes were that we were, were strong and uh, we, we got people for 90 minutes, but I don't know what wrong that day. It, it, it just didn't seem to happen for us. Then it was just uh, like mo mo a lot of people just had off games that day instead of everyone being on it. I think so, yeah. I think I don't even, I wouldn't say the, the occasion overcome us, but we weren't as fluent as we usually were. I think we let we gave Tottenham too much respect and we let them pass it about too much. Yeah, it would have been, I mean, there's, it would have been nice going to Wembley because at the minute everyone's talking about, because uh, we've got the, the quarterfinals next, when is it, next week, Tom, or the week after? Uh, 27th, uh, a week after. 27th. And everyone's saying that, oh, Leicester have got a good chance of getting to Wembley and it'd be sod's law that it, we'll get to Wembley this year and there'll be no fans allowed there because we haven't been for such a long time. It would have been lovely going there back in uh, 80, 82. It would have been fantastic. I think, to be fair, I think they've kept the season going on Liverpool's behalf, I think. I think it would have been unfair to stop yeah. the season now because, that you know, they were so far in front. So I think that's the reason they brought it back. It's just that they, they can get what they deserve, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Well, they because... do deserve it, really. They've waited a long time, so... Oh, yeah, and if tonight's to go by, it's going to be terrible the last few games watching it with no crowd and things like that. It's, you know, yeah, it's... I've watched some of the German football and it's not the same, is it? It's Oh, no, no, no. No, I've just done a bit of painting over there. I'd watch it dry rather than watch, <laughs> it. <laughs> watch what's going uh, on at the moment. <laughs> I've got a question on, on Facebook. Then, Tom. Uh, do you remember your goal against Wolves when we won 5 0? Well, being as I live on just on the border of Wolves, and uh, I could never mention him when I was brought up, that game <laughs> stayed. That game stayed with me. That has because uh, it was nice to uh, to do him over. So you enjoyed playing against Wolves more than anybody. Uh, Wolves in the Villa, yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this program. Like, I'll, it'll only be mild. But Go on, then, up, just the ones. Growing up, I was allowed to say bloody and bugger. But if I ever said Villa or Wolves, I used to get a clout. So, <laughs> so who is your actual team you follow now? Do you follow a team still? To be fair, I follow every team I play for, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we've had a um, lot of fun players say that. Yeah, because every club I've gone to, I think you do a little have a little bond with them. But um, the nice thing now, and I'm not just saying it because I'm on your show now, is that I haven't been on Facebook for years and years. And then uh, I've just become manager of um, 
a West Midlands Regional League called Rennes over here. So I've gone back on Facebook as my full name. And um, I had, I think it was eight friends before I changed my name. I've now got 1,400 and it's still climbing. And now to those 1,400, I'd say nearly 1,300 Leicester fans. That's how popular you were, pal. You were, you were fantastic. Oh, we're running down that wing. It's overwhelming, I mean, to be honest, because like um, not being in football for so long, you, you you forget about it. But now everybody's bringing things back and, you know, it's great, to be honest, because you're going back down memory lanes and it's nice to hear what what thrills you did for people, which you don't get to realise when you're playing. But then the memories they've got and they've still got now, oh, it, it, it makes you, you know, top of the moon. Yeah. We, uh, um, we speak to your... We, hold on, Tom. We speak to your old friend, Alan Young. He's, he's not very well at the minute, but he might pop on in a minute. He normally watches the show. Old, yeah. uh, Alan Young, he loves watching these shows and he leaves the odd comments now and again. Have you got any stories about Alan Young? You're allowed to tell us without stopping <laughs> swearing. <laughs> if I told you stories about Alan Young, he'd, he'd be, come and beat me up as well. But... <laughs> you could run away from him, though. You're that quick. I know, yeah. He'd still catch me. He, he, got me, he was one of the ones who got me in the gym. But um, <laughs> Alan was one of the. He was like a father to everybody. He was. He was the man down there that he went out of his way to make you feel welcome, if you know what I mean. And he always looked after you on the pitch and off the pitch. And uh, you know, I can't say anything bad about Alan because he's, he's a fantastic guy. Fantastic. So if so, if there was a dodgy fullback that kicked you, he'll kick him back for you, would he? <laughs> Oh, God, yeah, I remember we played Tottenham. And um, I don't know if Alan remembered this. We played Tottenham down there. And uh, Garth Crooks fell over in the box and he tried to get a penalty. And I had a go at him and he spat in my face. And then the next thing I know, one of the referees calmed me down. I turned around and Youngie's got him by the throat. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you. Typical, <laughs> typical Scotsman, that is. Well, that's, that's, that's the kind of guys they were, you know. They were hard. And yeah. uh, they were loyal. And they were loyal. You, you couldn't get away with it now, could you? It's totally different football is now. Oh God, no! Like my two lads start uh, playing now, and that's why I've got back into football. And I try and tell them, um, you know, I've gone through. I've uh, brought my nose. I brought my nose nine times. I brought my back. I brought my ribs. I had my ear ripped off. I've had loads of. Why, uh, mate? And it was all part and parcel of the game then. I remember when Peter East Oakham, we played Man United. Um, big Gordon McQueen, he broke uh, Peter East Oakham's jaw, both sides. Yes, I remember playing. that, yes. And um, I, some bright spark told me to stand in front of him on corners and I got an elbow and I lost two teeth. And it was just, you know, <laughs> it was just part and parcel because after that game, we were both sitting at A&E in different, you know, next to each other in the cubicles. But uh, I was having my teeth put back in and he was having his jaw wired up. Blimey. But Tom's got a question. Tom? Yeah, I've got Tom's, a few questions. Tom used to be a tricky winger. Tom used to be like you, yeah, a bit of a tricky twinkle toes winger. Probably not that twinkle. What? Uh, now, <laughs> you know, I've got a few, and there's a few on Facebook we'll run through now, but the one for me was going to say, back in the day, I mean, you played on some state of the pitches, uh, and you don't have the look, you know, luxury of the pitches now where you can knock the ball past a fullback who wasn't so quick and do him for pace. I mean, how do you think it's helped playing back in the day on those muddy pitches? What's uh, you know, would I'd say tire your legs very quickly com the, compared to nowadays football? I think to be honest, if I played in modern day football now, I'd keep tripping over because it looks like a carpet. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, and it's it's too flat. But I think uh, going back to our days, I think it helped in a way to be honest because it made you a better kind of player because. Um, if you could trap a ball on one of those pitches or you could run with the ball on one of those pitches, it, you know, it, as the season went on, it, it made you concentrate more and, and it was better for you. Fair play. A couple of Facebook questions. Let's get them on. Uh, Where's it gone? He lost it, Tom. Do you, drop do you remember, you're talking about muddy and pitches. Do you remember the Southampton game? Oh, God, yes, I do, yeah. When you went swimming. Um, that's right, yeah. But the funny thing about that is, though, when he called the game off, 15 minutes after he called the game off, the pitch was perfect. 
it was just that it came down that that quick and it was a flash flood. Yeah, yeah. And then we went back out after the, he called the game off and everything, and it, it had all gone. So strange. I remember I remember that bend of that game. It was a nightmare trying to get out. But like you say, about 10, 15 minutes, it was still hammering down, and then it stopped. And it was just yeah. terrible trying to get out of there. Oh, it was awful. Soaked to the skin. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, Andy Young says, you scored the first goal I ever saw at Filbert Street at Penn against Derby in Feb 82. Do you remember that game? Um, to be fair, I can't remember most of the games, to be honest. Um, the ones that like you do stand out is your Shrewsbury game, your Wolves game and Liverpool game and when we draw three each at home, things like that. But um, trying to think back, I have some problems sometimes. Sometimes I can't remember what I did last week. So, but uh, it's nice. Now. It's nice now, though, because all the Leicester fans are reminding me. They keep sending me these things and that, and it's it's bringing back some good memories. Good, good memories. That's why there's thirteen hundred of you. Exactly. Yeah. Who's a better player, Lineker or Smith? Ooh, Ooh you can't. Ooh. Have, you can't help me that way. <laughs> well, considering awesome. we've got Alan Smith on in two weeks, so you've got to be careful what you say. <laughs> Oh, I love Smudger because we used to travel over together every day. So I think I can get away with a few things with Alan. But to be oh, fair, bring you on in a couple of weeks, then you can have a chin wag with him. <laughs> I'll have a chin wag with him. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> but to be fair, I think it was our method and our style of play that made each other look good. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Because um, some guys, some days, got to be on fire. Other days, Alan Smith would be on fire. Some days, I'd be on fire. And I think it was a kind of when you get to know each other's style of play. You make each make each other look good. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Was it something that just clicked, you three? Because I mean, like I said earlier, you scored 161 goals between you in three seasons, which is a lot back then. Just, I mean, you scored your fair share. I know the other, I know Lineker and Smith scored a lot, but you still scored your fair share. But did something just click, or did anything you worked at, or was it just like, oh, it just just happened? To be fair, it's a thing. It's a thing that you work at. Um, Big Jock started it off and then when Jock left Gordon Mill took over and they were like different in temperament but kind of same style if if if, it, if that makes sense so yeah, yeah. Um, I read some of Alan's book um, after Gary left when he put in his book saying that he was he was more at ease when Gary had left because he he could make the run he wanted to do in the box whereas they knew as soon as the ball got knocked out to me I'd get it in as quick as I can Gary usually come near post. Alan used to go far. And it was the thing that if I didn't hit Gary, I'd hit Alan behind him. So it was a kind of style of play to be nice that, that, that we worked on a lot. That's good. Also, uh, there's a question on there from Rob McFarlane, Tom. Did you ever yeah. do the one lip sand hills? Because that was a big thing, Jock. I'm not sure whether you were still, whether you were there or did he end it before you got there? I got there, thank God, just as he ended it. <laughs> but the the stories that the lads were saying where he used to stand at the top and he got a stick in his hand and as you progress yeah. up, up and up, he'd, you know, the slower you got, the more you get your fingers wrapped at the top when you got there. But, yeah, I've um, seen a photo of that. It looks like he was standing yeah. there like a sergeant major with one of them battalion sticks under his arm. And... Oh, yeah, the lads were saying he used to whack your lands if you were crawling up towards the end. But um, <laughs> that was his style and... Um, you can't knock the man because it worked. It worked for us. It worked a treat. I think it showed oh, yeah. um, against. It show, I think it showed that there was a lot of um, teams that we wore down and battled against and kind of beat up. If you if you know the sense, not fighting yeah, yeah. wise, but beat them up with our style yeah. of play yeah. on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. Um, How did you get on with Cole? Mug, uh, Cole, Mark Wallington. Mark Wallington. Same Carl again. Wallington was last. Carl yeah, Wallington Cole. was last week. Tom, come on, are we up? <laughs> think about it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if, um, if this don't sound too corny, I couldn't have had a bit of 15 lads. They were all like brothers. I think um, I think that was another thing of Jocks and Gord Milnes as well. They wanted the team to grow, but they wanted the team to grow together. So we didn't really see ourselves as individual stars. So that made us a bit stronger so that the chain never broke. Um and I think that that worked wonders all through my career. That did. So there wasn't one player you got on better than one any of the others. Did you just all get on together? 
we all got on. We had all had our little groups. Like I said, we had the lads from Birmingham travelling over. Bob, Bob Hazel, uh, Mark Root, Big Jim. Bob. Big Bob, yeah. Did and, you ever uh, play against him before you came to Leicester? I hated him. I hated him because um, he played for Wolves and we played... Um, I played for West Brom then in the FA Youth Cup uh, final. And uh, he, he'd done me in the first leg. And I couldn't play the second leg. And I hated him for years. And then, um, I'll tell you what, when he come to uh, Leicester, it's another thing as well. So funny, you, you couldn't meet a nicer guy. Yeah, is it? And, um, the nice thing about him is he had, he, he had a, a Saab turbo and he used to drive it like a nutter. Anybody get on his way, <laughs> anybody got on his way, because of the size of me, he, 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 you know, he didn't bother him. And uh, the one day uh, we were, we were travelling over from Birmingham and I was in my car and he was asleep in the front. And I'd cut this lorry driver up, give him some verbals through the window. And then within 30 seconds, there was a traffic jam. Traffic jam. And I looked at me in the mirror, I seen the guy getting out the lorry walking towards the car. And he, he looked quite big, this guy did. So I was trying <laughs> I was trying to help Bob, Bob and I woke Bob up and then Bob got up and just opened the door and got out and the guy, when he saw Bob got out, he just done a U-turn and then got back straight into the <laughs> I thought, thank God for that. I did read thank a story that he had to sew two pairs of shorts together for Bob because his thighs were that big. Is that true or is that not yes. true? No, it is true. It was true. His thighs were absolute joiners. But he had the if you looked at the bottom of his legs, he had little weedy chicken calves. <laughs> You know what How I mean? many times and did you ever tell him that? Only the once. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, he used to take it because I think he knew himself. Because, you know, yeah. you look at the top of him, he was massive. His thighs were massive. But then below the knee, you know, he, you know, you could laugh at him, to be honest. Well, beyond his back. <laughs> Good question. And and I was more know. scared. But I was more scared of younger than I was of him. So that just shows you. Blimey. Uh, Annie Meadows asked, who was the joker in the pack in your uh, days at Leicester? I think, to be honest, the joker, the main one, was um, Bobby Smith. He was yeah, he yeah. was all, he was all lad. Up. Yeah, great, great guy. And, um, yeah, I think, to be honest, he, he was he was a joker. He used to start stuff off. Here's, here's one for you. Keith Goddard's just put a question up. Which of the current Leicester squad reminds you of yourself? Ooh. 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 Hard to say, to be honest. Um, I'd like to say all, all Brighton because he, he gets good early crosses in. I don't think he's as, he's, he's as quick. But um, I think, to be honest, you could you could work on him because you know as soon as he gets the ball, he's going to whip it in early. And some, yeah, yeah. Of the games I have, some of the games I have watched, he, you know, he causes a lot of problems that way. Because some games you can get to read a player and you know how to stop him that. But with with Mark, you can know the ball's in before you can realise it, which I think, yeah, yeah. to be honest, is, is quite a good thing, to be honest. And do you think you could have survived in the Premiership? How you played then, do you think you could survive now? The way with your style? To be fair, I think I would have. I think I, I might, it might have suited me, to be honest. Because um, I wasn't the most skillful player. I had um, a good engine and people kept telling me I was quick. So, you know, and even with these flatter pitches now, it might have been worked even more. But there again, you've got to watch out because do players get to know your style and do they they stop you know, straight up? <coughs> Excuse me, straight away. But with modern football now, I don't think there's many people that take people on. No, you I don't at, think there um, is, is not. You looked at Rashford when he come on first come on the scene. You know, he used to take people on, and then all of a sudden he stopped doing that. You had, um, he was the only one who used to play for Tottenham and that now. He plays for Crystal Palace. Townsend, he was the same when he oh, first yeah. came on the team. Yeah, yeah. Into the England team, he was taking people on, and all of a sudden he stopped doing that. So I think, to be honest, modern football, they don't encourage individual players anymore. It's all systems and things like that. You have to play to a system and... Yeah, we don't really play with wingers anymore, do we? Not many clubs do play with outs and out wingers, do the Tom anymore? No, I mean, oh, look, oh, so I was going to say, if you look at the modern day winger now, a lot of them is all about cutting back inside and crossing it on the you know your wrong foot or being put on the opposite side to do more of a, an in swinger than an out swinger of a cross. 
what's sad really because the day of a, a modern winger beating his man and getting to the byline doesn't seem to be around as much I think to be honest the thing that to be for Leicester is when you did win the championship because they did play that way for a bit and I think everybody was geared up to play that way and uh, it reminded me of our era because it looked the same there was a system where Leicester were playing to they were playing to the strengths and then they go and win the, the premiership and then the thing after that is when they won the premiership they changed the style and went to go back like everybody else and they lost the way and i think now they they're just, yeah i think they're just starting to get it back again now and i think that's the way i think modern football should go back sometimes go back to you know a bit further and look back to what we used to do and then try and change things I'm a bit like you, Steve. I'm very much more old school football, four four two. The old two in midfield, two wingers and two up front. But no one plays it anymore, do they? No one thinks it's the right way to do. No, you you go back to a I'm keep going back to our era, era and all that, but that's when English football was great in Europe because it was our style of play and nobody yeah. could stop it. And then all of a sudden we stopped doing that and then we started to play like them and we've never had no success since. So I think the team that I like watching now is the team that's on now, Sheffield United, because they try and play a bit old school. Yeah, yeah. And I think... Very you know, much old school they are. And I think that's, you know, you can see the benefits for them. I think it, it's refreshing, to be honest, because I'm getting bored of watching Man City. I'm getting bored of watching your Chelsea's <laughs> and your Arsenal's. Because, you know, I'll go to... Uh, I've been to a couple of games and I've took my lad and I'm sitting there and you can hear the crowd around you when somebody gets the ball. Take him on, take him on. But they don't, they just pass it. And when they do get near the goal, they pass it back and then it ends up back with your keeper again. There was, uh, I feel this is a question, it's sort of a, a mixed question, this is. Um, early on this season in October, Leicester won 9-0 and there was two hat-tricks, Perez and Vardy. Well, back in 82 against Carlisle, you and Gary Lineker both scored hat-tricks on the same day at home. Who had the match ball? Gary. Oh... <laughs> Thought you might have sneaked it off in. No, no, no. And uh, no. I also, uh, I also remember the picture as well when we uh, we had a photo took for the program. He got the Leicester blue shirt, and I got the red away one. Oh, you know what I mean? But uh, but nah, it, he wouldn't have, it, he wouldn't have got that trick if I didn't give him the penalty though. I was just going to say that you could have got uh, four, but then you gave him the penalty, didn't you? Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's 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 just teamwork. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll never, I'll never be grudged him. Damn it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Youngy, just cut. Oh, go on. I was going to say, uh, good question was, what was it? Pl uh, what was playing in UEFA Cup like for Shamrock? No, oh, Shamrock. Um, Shamrock came around really funny because um, when Johnny Giles was at West Brom, he left West Brom. But before he left, he told me that... Um, I hadn't got no chance of getting into the team then because you had Willie Johnson, you had Laurie Cunningham and all that there. And then uh, he'd gone and uh, he gave me a free. And then about a few days later, he phoned me up and asked me to go and play for him in Shamrock. Um, he just bought the club. Um, it was part-time till we went there. We were the first professional club or semi-pros to go there. And um, that was a massive, massive learning curve. And it, it, it was great, to be honest. And um, we did win the cup over there. We did play in Europe. I scored in Europe. Um, I think Apo Apo El Nicosia. I scored a cracker to be on his left foot. And uh, the only reason I did that is because I, I think it was late on in the game and it was that hot. And I kept chasing the ball and chasing the ball. And I was getting a bit tired. I thought, oh, sorry, I'm just going to eat it. And woof, it flew and I couldn't believe it. And then um, as we were trying to leave the country, they, they wouldn't let me out at the airport. They wanted me to stay. I thought, yeah. <laughs> I could get used to this. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there a story about when you signed for Shamrock, somebody held you up at gunpoint or saying not allowed to? You didn't want you to sign for them? No, that was... Um, I went over, to be honest, before Johnny Giles took me over. I went over to um, Sligo and I had uh, right. a few, few English lads went over there. And uh, we all stayed in a, a bar, um, in, a, in a room above a bar. And then uh, the one day we was going to training... And then um, went down the stairs. We had to walk through the bar to get out. And this guy just stopped me outside. 
and um, he had a jacket on, pulled the jacket out to a side like, and there was a pistol in his trousers. And he said, if you're here tomorrow, you're dead. And, oh, that was it. Woof, gone. <laughs> Don't blame you at all. I think I would have been off as well, to be honest. No, yeah. And then, like, two or three days later, Johnny Charles um, phoned me up. And I was a bit, you know, a bit cautious, but Sly goes by the border, Shamrock's down in Dublin. But um, when I got down in Dublin, it was totally, diff totally different. The people were first class. First class. Uh, Rob, go on, Rob just put a comment on there. But, yeah, did you ever meet, because Gary Linnickle's big mates with Willie Thorne. Did you ever meet Willie and go and play snooker down there? Yes, we all used to go down there. Um, like you say, Gary used to take us down there. Um, I never used to play that much, to be honest, because I wasn't that very good. But um, Gary was Gary was good, and uh, it was nice. Um, it was nice to see Willie because he, you know, we used to watch him practice and that. And um, like I say, another another fantastic guy, and it's it's really you know sad news today. I think it, it definitely is. And do you ever get back to Leicester at all to watch any of the Leicester games? Have you been back recently? To be fair, my last game um, was two years ago on my 60th. Um, the wife done the dirty on me. She um, she got in touch with Alan Smith and uh, they arranged for me to go down there. And um, it was a VIP day. Uh, we had a meal upstairs in the, the director's uh, restaurant. And I got to go out on the pitch at half time, have a word with Birchie. Um, oh, Birchie gets everywhere, doesn't it? Oh, great. <laughs> Oh, Good lad he is, isn't he? Well, I'll tell you what, he's Mr. Leicester City, he is. Mr. Leicester City. But no, he's, he's another great guy. But to be fair, and I'm not just saying this, Leicester City is second to none because you're always made to feel welcome. Um, I've gone back to West Brom, I've gone back to Blues. Um, you don't get the same welcome. Uh, they haven't got the facilities where Leicester have got like an ex-players lounge and they encourage you to go and do things and that. Whereas your West Brom and your Birmingham is more commercialised. You go in there to, you know, I don't know, to be honest, to have meals with people and just sit around in rooms and that. But with Leicester, it's more of a family. And, um, you know, I, I shall take that to, to my grave till I die, mate. It's fantastic. I was going to say, just quick, going into the modern day football at the moment, uh, have you watched many games recently, Leicester? I don't know if you saw the Leicester versus Villa when we beat them 4-0 or the last game before the lockdown hit effect. Uh, what do you make of what the current squad have done uh, this season, being third in the Premier League with, you know, smashing the big clubs out of the way again? Yeah, like I said earlier, I think Leicester, going back to the way they started to play when they won the, the Premiership before, I think... Um, you watch Bard, you know, he's back to his best. And everybody, when they get the ball, they all seem to break. They know what they're doing, they're breaking forward. And uh, I think, to be honest, it might have done some harm, this 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 stoppage, because it'll be just, just like a season starting again when people are on tenderfoots and they're just trying things out again. And I think they might have lost a bit of the, the momentum, plus having no, no crowd. You know, I, I, I'm hoping not, but... You know, I think it might take two or three games and it's going to be valuable points dropped, I think, if it does happen. Yeah. Oh, there was actually one... I Just just coming to me head talking about no crowd. The Burton Albion game. Yeah. When you played at Coventry in front of about yeah. 200 people, was it? Something like that. Yeah. It's, that must have been a weird game. It is weird, to be honest. It's um, no disrespect disrespect to football or footballers but it's just like a practice match you can't really get yourself into it if you know what I mean You, um, it's just like playing you know 12 against 12 down the training ground yeah yeah. it must, it must be weird it's going to be weird it's weird watching it on TV but it must be weird for the players oh god yeah you know um, what makes it worse for me is that you know you there's nothing going to excite you it's the fans and the roar that excite people, I think. And um, yeah, yeah, the style of play now is you're just going to watch people passing the ball around sideways, backwards, do whatever, 90 minutes. And like you said before, there's not many players that's going to take people on. So you're not going to get excited. Even if you're sitting at home with a beer in your hand, I can't see you getting excited over it. Not because really. It's not going to be the same because it's, it's, it's the roar going down there and swearing and doing whatever you do and shouting at the ref and you know what I mean 
that's to be honest, that's what football's all about. That's how I always brought up anyhow. Because oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's not about the games because some some of the times you go to the matches, you don't even watch the match. You know, you're watching the crowd, you're joining in with the crowd, you're doing whatever. And I think that's what makes the day it is. Um going back to when you said about Shrewsbury, the atmosphere of that game was second to none. It was brilliant. And I think that's what got us through. And then when you go to the semi-final thinking it's going to be even better with a bigger crowd and whatever, it wasn't right because it, the reaction wasn't the same. Um, and it's, it's, it's things like that. That's good. I think well, that, that's about summed it up and we've got over time, Tom. We have got over time. But There's been well, lots of questions, hasn't there? I can't thank you enough for coming on, Steve. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you come on tonight, mate. You know, you were great at the club. Up there with the goal scoring boots, you know, 60 odd goals in five um, seasons. In five yeah. seasons. Fantastic. So thank you once again. And hopefully we can get you back on towards the end of next season or yeah. during the season. We'll I, just, uh, back on. I just want to ask a big favour if I can. Yeah, I no like, problem. I would like, if possible, if Leicester City would adopt our team now, Wren's Nest. I know it's only a little Midlands Division One team, but I'd like it to be just like Leicester because we want to try and get it the same. I want to try and create the same atmosphere and whatever. And we're looking for supporters and things like that. So I'll just drop that out if well, I can. I'll tell you what, Steve, if you drop me the link on the message that I sent you, well, yeah. I gave you the link for this show, send me yeah. all the details on there and we, we can we can sort something out, put a post out and stuff like that and put the word out for you. That's, that's for certain. There's no problem with that. Wow, we can do great. something that's there. Great. Yeah, lovely. To start the ball rolling. Is there a Twitter page as well? They've got a Twitter page as well, yeah. I'll get all the info and send yeah. it over to you. Send all my details yeah. and we can sort it out from there, pal. It's been much appreciated. Because yeah. I, like I like the old school chats. I like the old school. God, yeah. More than the younger I could... ones. I like the I could... older school ones. Jock Wallace time and Gordon Mill like that. Oh, God, yeah. I could sit here and talk like about it. Like I say, we've got, Alan, <laughs> we've got Alan Smith on in a couple of weeks. I'll send yeah, you the link it's... as well and you can surprise him. All of a sudden, you pop up. Oh, God, <laughs> Hello, yeah, Smudger. Well. I will do, yeah. yeah we could get oh, you on that night. That'd be brilliant. I've got yeah. If we can get him on the same night of Alan Smith, we'll try and do it, mate. That'd, That'd be, be brilliant. brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. All right. Much appreciated, Steve. Thanks, guys. We'll let you go. Thanks, Cheers, mate. Pal. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Yeah. Bye-bye. Good night. Well, Ooh, that was good, wasn't it? There's some great stories in there. I mean... That's old, know, that, Tom, that's old school football for you. None of this modern day stuff that you know been, about. You know, I, you know, I wasn't around in that area, you know. Mine's, you know, from 95 onwards. But you... As a fan, you hear about these players, you, the great players, your Keith Wellers, your Linexes, these yeah, players, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. not privy to watch him, but to like, sit there and listen to him, it's, it's memorising at times because we all know the modern day football and carpets and everything like that. To him, talk about yeah, yeah. track of a number on the dodgy pitch and everything like that, it's just fantastic. But again, thank you for doing your work to get him on, mate. It's much appreciated. Not a problem. I mean, there's a lot of old, there's a lot of older fans that watch this show, but not, I don't mean old, old, I mean of my age and up. <laughs> that remember that quite vividly, then things, the Shrewsbury game, Jock Wallace, uh, the Southampton, they, they'd want to hear stories like that. And some of them love it. Some of them love it. Here are Barry Robinson. Tom, you don't know what you missed back then. Aren't you? Oh, mate, I missed out on some golden eras. I mean, I always say like, I was lucky enough to watch the O'Neill eras, but then I was <laughs> unlucky that I had to watch some Peter Taylor's rubbish and... Yeah, you know, I, I saw as I followed as dragged us through administration and League One and all that heartache. So, you know, I'm being lucky that I've seen some great times, including the Champions League run. You know, these yeah. things behind me, they're not there for no reason, there because I was there and it's something that I'll live with, you know. So, Jamie's had the same experience with, but back in the day, and he's watched some even better players than I've probably got to see. Jock. Jock was my first man. Well, my first manager. I did it. I wasn't playing. It sounded like I was playing. <laughs> Jock, Jock Wallace was the first manager that was there when I started watching. So the hit for that, he's like one of my favourites. He's like third or fourth. He's level with Brendan Rodgers until Brendan Rodgers actually like wins it or qualifies for the Champions League. He might go above it, but Jock Wallace is certainly up there with me. Certainly up there. And a lot of the older fans will, I think, will be the same. They love a bit of Jock. It was. My dad knew him. He, my dad kept my uh, Jock Wallace kept calling him Ah Wee Man. My dad was about twice the size of Jock Wallace, and he kept calling Jock Wallace kept calling him Wee Man. I think, yeah, okay. Well, it's not for me doing this program, coming on here. You know, when I was first started going down and speaking to Alan Young with Phil, I mean, listening to him talk, it, the, the times are completely different now. But the stories are all the same. There's always those stories from the dressing rooms of the players and the times. 
but we have gone way over than we should have done. <laughs> Phil's going to be a, we've enjoyed it. Laughing, oh. It's been a great show. And once again, put another thank pound you in the meter <laughs> to make sure. Yes, not a problem. Hey, not a problem. Oh, a, next thanks. week, next yeah. week, next Wednesday, uh, we have got Phil G. Phil G. Yeah, Quality. another Side from and Derby with old Ian, Ian and Norman Roy. So that'd be interesting next week as well. Should be some good stories coming out of that one. And me anyway, on Sunday. <laughs> I oh, no. but even remember. more important, more important, football's back. Well, Saturday's massive. We go into Watford away. It's going to be a tricky game. I've said that from the start. Nigel Pearson ain't going to be wanting to give us three points easily. I know. I love Nigel, but against you, mate, it's uh, about the Foxes getting that vital oh, victory. Yes. A vital victory. I'll take a 1 0 scruffy game just to get that yeah. push going because it's going to be. A strange atmosphere, and I really do think it'll be strange for the players going. Having watched half, the first half of the Sheffield game, what it was so weird having fake crowd noises being played onto the screen and chances yeah, missed, yeah, yeah. and then having a, a roar and stuff like that. Now it's not for me. Uh, can't wait to get back to the ground, but why we can't, you know, it's the only way things can be done. It is going to be strange for the players, but hey, well, I'm looking forward to 12 30 on Saturday to see the, the Mighty Blues get back underway again. Don't forget, we're on air at uh, 11 25 on Saturday. An yes. hour before. Join hour us on five Saturday. Before, actually. Come and join us, have a yes. chat about the team news and uh, see where we are. Right. Okay, thanks again, Go on then, Tom. Much Go on. I'll leave you out here. Chuck me off. Chuck me off now and you can finish it. See you thank later, you. pal. And as ever, thank you, the fans. You know, you're the ones that make the show. The comments you put in are fantastic as always. I'm going to lie, I was nervous of anything doing this first show tonight, uh, but I fully enjoy it and I can't wait for the next week's now. But as always, it's thanks to the sponsors because we're on a street. We don't, it's, we don't get paid for doing this. We do this out of love and the sponsors help us do, get the equipment to do this kind of stuff. So thanks to the sponsors and thank you all for these comments again. Cheers. Good night.